Let us pray. O God of Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, and Jesse, we invoke your name throughout the ages and again here today. Father and Mother of all mercies, look down upon us and give us peace with justice. Amen. I don't worry, I am under orders from the canon and liturgist of this congregation to keep it under 10 minutes. He also instructed me to wear my doctor's gown. I didn't know I would be competing with the point settings. <laughs> be that as may, the ninth chapter of Isaiah and the eleventh chapter of Isaiah announce first the oracle of the messianic king who is to rule over Israel and the people of Israel. And second, uh, our lesson today, uh, chapter 11, uh, describes the reign of the messianic king who uh, uh, springs from a branch of Jesse and is a messianic Davidic king. Messianic Davidic kings were not meant to be absolute monarchs. They had a covenant relation with the people, God's people, namely all people, and God him or herself. And it was kind of a negotiation as long as social well-being prevailed in the land, the king was doing all right. But when there were more poor, poor than there were rich, and when uh, people were starving, uh, the word peace, the Prince of Peace, God, I bring you peace, means not only peace, but social well-being, justice. Fifty years ago, when I responded to a call from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, to assist in a voter registration drive in Mississippi, and I did that two or three times, and was arrested carrying a sign that said, no peace without justice. And there is no peace without justice. The black Baptist clergy of the South no more than we Harvard types about Isaiah. They had read Isaiah and they believed the word of the Lord. And they translated the word of the Lord into justice. There is no peace without justice. The Black Baptist knew more than we white outside agitators knew about Isaiah. Peace means both justice and consequently peace. And what is justice? Justice is the righteousness of God translated through human agents so that 
conditions prevail so that everyone can meet everyone else on equal terms, no matter what their status has been. That is justice. Where is justice today? Where is peace today? That's why we worship the God of Israel, the Messianic, Davidic God of Israel, who sent messengers and repeated over and over again. You've heard it in the Messiah. Handel took Isaiah and set it to music. It penetrated the culture, but it only penetrated the music of the culture. And it is our job as uh, faithful adherents of the Messianic Davidic kings to work for justice. Mary knew that. Mary knew that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he will cast down the mighty from their seats and exalt those of low degree. Where is that taking place in the world today? Anyway, there are two important lessons from Isaiah. The Messianic adopted sons of God, Davidic kings, were not absolute monarchs. They didn't dictate, they negotiated with God and history and the people. And God chooses what the world scorns to do his will amongst us. As referenced already, Jesus was a Jewish peasant. He read the Bible, he read Isaiah, he read the other prophets, and he was motivated to be peace and justice. Mary says, cast down the mighty from their seats. Jesus didn't need to be cast down from his seat. He was already, he got the message. He got the message. Secondly, and finally, God chooses what the world scorns, through which, through whom, through anybody to do his will. And his will, from beginning to end of all religions, is peace with justice. And we can no, do no better than to thank God that that is our challenge, and that is our burden, and that is our task. And by faith, we will do a little bit, as Obama says, to nudge you the boulder up the hill just another inch or so, so that someone coming afterwards it can nudge it up a little bit more toward peace with justice. You're not going to get from this pulpit an anti-commercialism homily. I thought about that a lot. 
I've preached a number of sermons attacking the orgy of expense at Christmas time. But it seems to me now that I'm advanced in my grandfatherhood at Christmas time we remember the God of Abraham, Isaac, Sarah, Rebecca, Jacob, Jesse, Jesus, who dwelled among us and taught us to be just and to be peaceful. Peace in Hebrew means justice for everyone, not just a few. So take time for each other at Christmas time. Take time to wrap your gifts and remember that a thought is more often more potent than the opulent gift, especially is that a danger in this culture. <clears throat> I'm reminded of a story, and this is the last story. Kurt Vonnegut and Joseph Heller, two famous American novelist were being honored in a huge, opulent uh, uh, east side of New York apartment, and the furnishings were absolutely magnificent. It was beyond, and Kurt Vonnegut said to Joe Heller, the author of Catch-22, he said, can you imagine how much this all cost? And I understand that our host has uh, two or three of these scattered around the world. And Joe said, Kurt, we've got something he'll never have. What's that? Enough.